On the 16th March 2022, Most Reverend Maurice Muhatia Makumba, Archbishop elect, concluded his pastoral journey in the Catholic Diocese of Nakuru in readiness to begin another pastoral experience in the Archdiocese of Kisumu. As he gets in the new pastoral transition, Archbishop elect had the following reflections for the entire family of the Catholic Diocese of Nakuru and Kisumu. I'm preparing myself to proceed on to Kisumu. My life and pastoral work and uh, engagements in uh, Nakuru are coming to an end today, the 16th of uh, March 2022. Tomorrow uh, I will be escorted. We shall proceed on uh, to begin another phase of my life in the Archdiocese of Kisumu where uh, in the border parish of Awasi, uh, the Christians of uh, Nakuru are going to hand me over to the Christians of the Archdiocese of, um, of Kisumu in preparation for the installation ceremony, which is going to be on the 19th of um, uh, March uh, 2022 in Kisumu, which is the feast of Saint Joseph, the husband of, uh, of Mary. He ends his pastoral activity by introducing his coat of arms. Nakuru uh, had uh, the vision of unity. That's why the, the motto in my coat of arms reads, Ut Unum Sint, from the Gospel of uh, St. John, uh, which uh, means that they may be one. My focus was mainly on that, that we may create a family of the people of God, united by the sacred heart of Jesus, as made manifest in uh, the, uh, the, the logo, because it is by the sacred heart of Jesus, pierced to the lands, that we have been given salvation from God as a gift. And in this life, family of God, together, we are nourished by the most important food, the Eucharist. Again, the Eucharist is symbolized in that coat of arms. When we are nourished on this bread of life, the Eucharist, we become a true family of the people of God, as if we were living under one roof, represented by the African heart in my coat of arms of Nakuru with an open door. I was moving towards creating a family that is always welcoming. That was the meaning of the open door and the heart in my coat of arms. And it is possible for our door to remain always open, embracing everybody, because we feed on the food of angels, the Eucharist. And we realize the heart of Jesus Christ pierced the lands was pierced for all of us. So I am moving from that. I am moving from the Ut Unum Sint, in Nakuru, and I'm moving into the Duke in Alto in the Archdiocese of uh, Kisumu. On the devotion to our Blessed Mother Mary, Bishop Muhatia believes Mother Mary has been of great help in his life. It's true, I, as a bishop, I have um, experienced that. Uh, Devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary gives a special accompaniment to a priest, and even more so to a, a bishop. Of course, since we were young, we were taught about the praying of the rosary, devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. But the more I live my years in the priesthood, the more I live my years as a bishop, the more I realize the close accompaniment that we receive from the mother of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And this goes back to that moment when the Lord was on the cross and he proclaimed his mother as our mother and proclaimed us through St. John as sons or children to his own, own mother. And I think from that moment on, the relationship between Mary and the church as a whole and Mary and 
individual Christians has never stopped. To me, I find her a great help in my life as a, as a bishop. Not just in praying the rosary, not just in praying the litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary, but also in close accompaniment through the songs, uh, through the other prayers, uh, through the angelus, and so on and so forth. I have found a lot of assistance, a lot of resourcefulness, a lot of accompaniment, and a lot of consolation many times from the mother of our Lord. Because you reach a certain point and you feel that there is somebody who is really interceding for you. There is somebody who is helping you come out of complicated situations, difficult situations, that of your own, you cannot imagine how you could ever have come out of it. But again, by the help of God, by the grace of God, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, I have found a lot of support in my ministry. And I will continue relying on her, even as I move to the Archdiocese of Kisumu, on her prayers, her accompaniment. And I pray that I may continue deepening my devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Being a strong advocate of education, he concludes his service in the Catholic Diocese of Nakuru with an initiative of empowering the entire community through establishment of a university in collaboration with the Jesuit congregation. We are doing the groundbreaking of, um, for, um, for a university, Hekima University in partnership with the, the Jesuits, the, the, the Jesuits, Society of, of Jesus. Uh, this arrangement, this plan for a university in Molom has been going on for some time now, and we had negotiations with the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, on the possibility of engaging them in uh, evangelization in the diocese. And we settled on uh, the land on uh, education, but more specifically, uh, university education. So the diocese offered to make a contribution to advancement, bringing this to fruition. The diocese offered a piece of land, from our piece of land in, uh, in, in Molo, offered 75 acres of land. We did this aware that uh, there are some regulations governing the establishment of uh, universities. We do not want the land to be a hindrance in the process of establishing it when it, uh, when it began. So today, with the groundbreaking, a, a very monumental event has happened in the diocese, but it is the place where it is happening that is also important. It is happening in Molo. Molo, since the early 90s, is one of the places that has been hit hard by violence. When we talk about clashes, when we talk about people displaced in Molo, talk about people who have died in Molo. Molo is one of the places that some would call the epicenter of some of the problems we have suffered in this country. And we can say people have lived under that shadow for a long time. So we have been thinking, what can we do to open a new chapter in the life of the people of Molo? And when this university came around, it was a good opportunity for us to begin this new chapter in Molo, to open Molo to many more opportunities. And I believe, I am confident, in the coming years, five years down the line, 10 years down the line, the university was, which we are grounding, breaking the ground today, is going to transform Molo in a big way, socially, spiritually, pastorally, economically, even politically. And we pray the university helps to contribute to the establishment of lasting peace in Molo as a place, Nakuru as a county, and contributes to the entire, the entire nation in that particular area. Because institutions of higher education have been known to transform places completely. And I know and I believe this university, Hekima University, that launched today, is going in a big way to transform Molo itself, 
but even beyond Molo, the whole of uh, Nakuru County is going to transform Molo to make it international because that place is going to get people from all walks of life, from all countries, from many places across the world. So I was very happy. I closed my activities in the Diocese of Nakuru with this particular important event, the groundbreaking for a university in this special place in the diocese in Molo, under St. Timothy Parry. This year, being an election year, he calls upon all to embrace peace and respect as we near the election time. Nakuru now for 12 years, and I can say in comparison to the past years, we have enjoyed a lot of peace. When I say Nakuru, it's good for us to remember, when you talk about Nakuru, you're talking about two counties, the county of Nakuru and the county of Baringo, they make up the diocese of Nakuru. There has been, by and large, peace. But I must emphasize, there are parts of the diocese that are still experiencing trouble, especially parts of Baringo, especially that part we call East Pokot. We still have sporadic uh, violence uh, in that particular area, trouble, clashes in that particular area, and we need to find a lasting solution to these problems as a country. Personally, after my 12, 12 years in this diocese, I have come to believe sporadic operations in that part of Baringo are not going to give us a lasting solution to the problems in that particular place. These people have many problems that we need to face as a country. We need to open up this particular place. Infrastructure. I think the government needs to work seriously towards opening this place by building roads. So this place becomes accessible. It's only until last year, the year before last year, that we had the first tarmac road going into East Pokot ever since the world was begun. The first tarmac road ever went there only two years, two years ago. These are places where police stations don't exist at all, at all. These are places where schools are very rare, few and far between, 20 kilometers between schools and so on and so forth. So access to education is very limited. The levels of uh, illiteracy are very high, sometimes in areas as high as over 90%. When people are living in situations like this, sporadic operations cannot be a lasting solution. There are plastic solutions uh, to a systemic situation that requires a very different approach. And I would invite the government, because I know they know the real problems of this part of Baringo. I would invite the government to invest more into infrastructure, to invest more into lasting security, to invest more into education, to invest more into health. This is the only way we are going to build a lasting, peaceful community in that part of Baringo that is so troubled up to today. Because every now and then, when these things are coming down, it comes up again. But apart from that situation that requires the attention of all of us, the church, the government, and all other leaders, most of the time in Nakuru has been very, very peaceful. And we've enjoyed peace in comparison to the, the past years. And I pray that this, this continues. In the past, people have looked at Nakuru as the center. In a certain sense, in a certain sense, even geographically, in a certain sense, it finds itself at, at, the, at the center. But it's more than a geographical center, a cultural center, where you have a meeting point of so many people. I cannot think of a community of Kenya that is not found in, uh, in Nakuru, especially in the urban areas of um, the county of Nakuru. It's a very, very cosmopolitan county, and that in itself is an, an advantage. We, the people of Nakuru, should take advantage of 
we as a country, we should take advantage of. And I'm making a very special appeal to the political leaders this time round. We know what we have gone through in the past. We know what we can go through if we are careless and reckless. And I appeal to each one of them, even as we politic, as we campaign, as we present our views to the people, our visions to the people, our manifestos to the people, let's do it with the Quran. Let us not instigate violence. Let us not incite our people to violence. Let us build peace among the communities. Let us not pit communities against each other. And with this, there's going to be experienced even more development in all sectors of life, in the days of Nakuru, both in Nakuru and in, uh, in Baringo. And I pray as we move close to the elections in August this year, all those who address the people are going to be measured in what they say and what they do. We, on our part, as the church, both in Nakuru, where I'm coming from, and in Kisumu, where I'm going to, we are going to build peace. Because it's the responsibility of the church to build peace with whoever person. And the Catholic Church does not discriminate against people, whether you are in the opposition or in the government of the day, all these are members of the church. And a priest or a bishop cannot show preference for one side or the other. Ours is to uh, act like a radar, directing the people, correcting the people without siding with any side. In fact, uh, it, is, it, is, it is not advisable for any priest, for any bishop to make manifest his political leaning because when you minister in the church, you minister to everybody, both those in this particular party A, in party B, in party C, those who are singing this song, those who are singing this song, when they come to the church, they are united in Utukuf. When they go out, one is singing this one, another is singing this one in praise of their own respective parties. So we encourage our people in the whole country, in a special way, I appeal to the people of Kisumu, where I'm going now, we shall continue playing our role as the Catholic Church, the role of supporting peace initiatives, the role of pointing out mistakes, that are being um, done by the people who are holding responsible positions. But at the same time, above all, we are going to act as the church is supposed to act as a mother. We will be pastors to everybody. We will minister to every one of you. Whether you are in this party or in the other party, you belong to the body of the people who are called children of God. Thank you.